Hello and welcome to an Everyday Canines video. This is the Garden Agility series and in episode four, we're gonna be looking at the pull-in queue. So I've got my garden set up. I've changed out my flower pots to a couple of different flower pots. I've still got my low piece of plumbing insulation. So that's acting as a jump bar, but it, thank you very much, madam. But it's just low because we're teaching a skill. So we don't need anything, come here. We don't need anything tall while we're teaching a skill. At this stage, we're just working on, we want them to think about the maneuver, not height. We're looking at pull-ins, which are also known as freddles. And that is when you're this side of the, behind the jump, and your dog's got to come from the far side of the jump. They've got to come all the way around the back and then take the jump. So you say to yourself, well, how was that different from a push round or around the back? Well, when you're doing around the back, your dog is the same side as you are. So Swift, come here. So if I'm doing around the back, around, round, 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 round. So she's gone away from me and come towards me. Good girl. When I do a pull in or a Fredo, come here, my maid. Okay, can you sit? Oops, that was me did that. We're now opposite sides. So I've got to get her to come round, even though she's opposite side. Swift, sit. Okay, come, jump. Good girl. So that's the main difference. That is quite an extreme pull in. More likely is you'd have, you'd see in a course, you'd have another jump there that your dog has taken from this side and you've now got to pull them in through the gaps. Why they're called pull-ins. You're pulling them in through the gap to take the next jump. Okay, so we're gonna show them how we teach this, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, when you're teaching this, I want you to make sure that your dog has done a lot of work on episode one with the jump commitment, because what we don't want is for us to teach this and then your dog to just start missing jumps. So what's a good idea is to do a few of these practices, then go back to just asking them to go, go across a jump. So they understand that we're not suddenly telling them to go round jumps all the time. Once the dog has got the jump commitment, they shouldn't do that. They should understand the difference, but just make sure of that. Okay, so we're gonna start baby steps. So, I'm gonna have Swift here. Sit my maid. And what I'm gonna do is ask her to come to my hand. Now, the old school way of doing a pull-in is also called um, a false reverse. Stop there. And what people used to do You'd be like this, but then you'd completely turn your body, call the dog in, which she can do, and go over. That was the original way you did pull-ins. That's great, that's not a problem. The issue is, it then means you've either got to try and run backwards, or you're slumming yourself right down. So if you've got something complicated over there, not ideal. The next way that people were doing it, was to use this arm, so this is your off arm. So this is my drive arm, because it's the same side of the dog, off arm, because it's not the same side of the dog. And they'd use that, and they'd use that for their freddle. So say they're coming from here, you'd pull that arm across you, turn your shoulder, and do that. Nothing wrong with that, I used to do that. And actually that works pretty good for a lot of dogs. It's a very clear signal to the dog that you've got to come this way. What then happened, is in a lot of the European um, shows, they started to realize that though that's good, it's still a little bit slow. So now they're, what they're doing, they're opening this arm out and this is now the cue for a pull-in. So no, no arm here, you come along, that arm goes out, that means pull-in. So that's the way I'm gonna show you today, but don't think you have to do that way. You can go right back to your reverse if you want to do that. And certainly don't feel you have to keep you don't have to have this arm, you can have this arm. The reason I've now switched to having a single arm for the pull-in is what I'll show you in a later episode because I use this, when you're doing an off arm, I use it for a very specific type of pull-in when I do a very tight one, which is not what we're showing you today. Okay, let's show you how you demonstrate this. So we're gonna start with Swift, this side of the jump. So she's opposite size to me. I'm gonna have a treat in my free hand, can you sit please? Now, if you've got a nose touch, you're already winning on this, because what you can do is you can put your arm and they come out and touch your hand as a nose touch. And can you already see, 
it's already starting to look like my final cue. So I'm going to do that a couple of times. <laughs> Can you see she actually wants, she knows what she's got to do. She's going, why am I nose touching? I know what I'm going to do. Obviously, if you haven't got that, we can do it slightly differently. So if you haven't got that, you could have your hand and call them. So let's just show. Sit for me, please. Swift. I've got to close this there because it's, it's um, more solid, but I would eventually open it to the open palm. You can have a treat in that hand if you really needed to, though. It'd be better if you can get them to do about. Swift. Okay. So you can see quite quickly we're getting them to come behind the jump. Your first session, that might be all you do, and then you go back to doing straight overs, because what we don't want is a situation where, swift sit, where if I'm stood here and say, go. Yeah, good girl. Do you see she hesitated there? You don't want a situation where she's suddenly going, you're stood there, that means I come round the back. Okay. At this stage, we're not using any words to give the cue, we're just getting the idea. So move on to the next stage so obviously we're going to move them a bit further again I can show her the hand she comes in she touches the palm of my hand we're good to go once we get to this stage we now need to take dog to take the jump now I've got two cues for this which is calm jump thank you good girl I would ideally prefer to have it all on one cue so that's something I'm trying to wean off. So I would certainly endeavour to make this all on one move. So let's see if we can get it. There, good girl. Good girl. So quite quickly, because she's experienced, we're getting to that stage where we can go. That was all based on my body motion. Once you get into that stage, your dog's coming around, they're jumping over the bar. Let's remove the food from our hand. Because now we don't want our dog looking at our hand. They can, but we want them to really think about what they're doing. So what we're gonna do is if we have you sit there, sit, we can put the treat there. Come, jump, get it. So now we're getting them to focus on the jump and where they're going, good girl. And they're not thinking about the hand. Now it's time for cues. What your cue is, is all dependent on what you want. Many people use in, 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 in. That's quite a common one. Um, I have that, but I have it for a different move. And that's all. That's the reason I use calm. Uh, there, there's all sorts of words. You could use any sort of words. It's up to you, really. What works for you? It's good if it's a continuous cue, because that helps the dog to keep going all the way around. So once upon a time, I used to have tuck, 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 tuck. Because to my mind, I think they were tucking in. The unfortunate bit was I realised that in a busy environment, that could sound very rude. So we scrapped that cue. Once you get to that stage and you're adding the cue, you can start to experiment. So instead of having to really coax her around the whole jump, I want to see if I can be here, say, and she'll do it. Come jump. Good girl. Good girl. And I'm going to see if she can do it from different angles. So that is obviously quite extreme. We've taught it from quite extreme. But what if we do it from a shallower angle? Can she still do it? Come jump. Good girl. Obviously, you're going to work both sides. I've only worked this side for the sake of the video. You may find that one side's better than the other. This is my better side. That side, we're not so good. Should we try that side and see what we do? Sit. Come, jump. Good girl. Now you notice in all these videos, when I ask her to come around, I'm asking Swift to jump long. This is because the sh this type of pull-in freddle I'm showing you is for that very reason. The reason is you're going to jump long. That's my cue for that. If I wanted her to come and do a really tight pull-in, which you do sometimes, I've got a different cue. So we're not gonna worry about that today. We're just looking at ones where she's gonna extend over the jump. Now, you might want her to carry on straight out, which is fine, that's why I say jump. She's going out straight out, we're going to set obstacle over there, fine. If, for instance, you want to come here, 
and then you wanted a sharp turn you need to start using a directional cue to tell her she's turning sharply back on herself so in this instance me because it's a left turn i need to tell her that she's going to turn left swift sit come loop 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 good girl so you can play with that once your dog's got confidence and i'll repeat myself but it is very important that you keep working those straights to make sure your dog doesn't especially baby dogs baby dogs very quickly pick up a pattern and you don't want your dog losing driver momentum because they think they're coming around all the time but that's your basic foundational skills and it is really easy to teach and once they've got it it looks really good it looks really fancy but it's actually really straightforward and easy to practice on in your garden i hope you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to our channel and like our facebook page and we'll see you again very very soon